All right, lads, we're back here for another week. Uh, was that the Stephen? Stephen's just in from the training ground. So apologies for being a bit late, but uh, we're going to the uh, Division One, Division Two, and whatever else. Uh, Stephen, how are you doing? Right, I'll, I'll go again, all right? The music's gone. Right, sorry lads, we're back here again uh, for another week. We are going to go through the uh, review of the, the league games, obviously, from the weekend. Um, we will discuss, uh, having a debate here, the five most skillful players in the country. Uh, that should be interesting. And we'll discuss, too, uh, Stephen's big win over Mayo and the Hurland from Anna. Man about Mayo a couple of weeks ago by two eighteen to two sixteen, so that would be a uh, that would be interesting. Big win for Mana. Shane reckons it's the biggest in their history. Um, I'm not sure about that, but sure, Stephen, you can fill us in on that. So, how's the? You're just in from the training ground, Stephen. Just in, uh, just uh, managing Mayo Bridge, uh, in down here the second year managing them, um, and uh, so we're we're back at pre-season, um. So, uh, ah, the boys are a good, great bunch of lads, great club as well, Andy, you know, so um, just, just very, very busy. Um, school, full flow in school as well. They're under 13s, under 15s right as well. So, ah, listen in, it's just nice to be able to do something that you're enjoying, you know, and you enjoy and you're in coaching and ah, it's very, very rewarding. But I just I just enjoy working with players and stuff, Andy, and seeing a bit of growth in the back and particularly in younger players as well. You know, it's fantastic to see, like, and... Jeez, it makes me feel old when I when I seen down playing there at the weekend and seen the likes of Connor Poland playing. And I think it's only yesterday Connor Poland was captain of the school in, in Kilkeel sixteen years ago. Like, and you know, you just look at him now; he's thirty two now, and you think, "Geez, where did them sixteen years go?" So, it's um, look, it, it's you know yourself. You've you've been in the game. Time flies when you're involved in sport. You know, absolutely flies. Like. Twenty years, twenty years goes goes by like that. It's it's mad. Oh, it's absolutely mad. Twenty years. 20 years. Funny, I was added I was added to a WhatsApp group the other night, actually. 20 years. The underdogs. I was in the first underdogs, 2003. Oh, yeah. So, my my yeah. claim to fame is that I ended Paddy Christie's career, but I didn't really, but I tell everybody that anyway, you know what I mean? Because I gave him <laughs> such a hard time. Uh, but it was it was funny because I was at a conference um, in, in Armagh about five years after, and Kieran Donaghy was speaking. And uh, a fellow teacher of mine turned around and says, uh, Kieran, do you know that you know, there's another man in the room here was an underdog as well. So I was, I was scundered like, and I just took the microphone off him and I said, Kieran, the underdogs made your career. It actually ruined mine. So the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, no, and there were great days. There were great days actually. It was a great, great run out against Dublin Parnell Park. Great days. I was playing full forward and Lord rest him. The great Brian Mullins was a selector. God love Brian. He's dead. He? Uh, Brian, Brian was a great. Um, and, and believe it or not, the new president of the GA was a selector that year too, Jonathan Burns. So um, they were good days. Good days. Mickey Neto you, was the manager, still staying. You know, could, could you could you could you see it? Could you see it in Donahue even back then? Like he was only a whipper back then. Obviously, the potential that you know, did you foresee he'd go on and do what he did on the pitch? Who was that? Sorry, Donahue, Kieran. You're on about Donahue there. Kieran Donaghy. Oh, Donaghy, Donaghy, Donaghy was a year after me. So we oh, were the very first one after? in 2000. Oh, sorry. He was, the, he, oh, very he was the year after. He was the year after, you know. So I just kept the jersey. I, I kept the jersey warm for him for the following year, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, what, 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 you make, what you make of the games on the weekends? What, what's uh, ticking your fancy? What did you, what did you take out of it? Yeah. Well, I, I took in quite a bit, quite a bit of football. Kerry and Mayo, uh, Mayo, my favourites to win the All Ireland. Mayo, who, who hey, wins between Mayo and the Who wins between Mayo and the Scotland? Hey, 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 uh, yeah, we we'll get Davy. We we'll get Davy on the line here. What, uh, um, what what did you, like, we start off, you're on about Mayo there, obviously, the, the, probably the biggest game was, well, I'm going to be biased yeah. here, Mayo and Kerry. Um, yeah. And, well, traditionally, the last 10 years, they've been, they've been quite, quite uh, they've been at the top table, but, like, you're, you're saying Mayo, Mayo for Sam, like, well, what did you, like, are you taking the piss there, or do you genuinely... No, 
No, listen, listen. Let's be honest. You know that they've they've made they've made obviously you know a really good start end to the league. They've made a really good start to the league. Um, you know, I think Ryan O'Donoghue has has, tur- has turned into a really, really outstanding footballer. And I know there's been big talk over the improvement of of certain individuals and that within the squad. Like, but you know, Ryan seems to be coming of age now. He seems to be maturing into a really, really top, top into county forward. You know, um, but it, even his movement, this guy, even even the goal he got, you know, was 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 absolutely outstanding. Like, but um, look, Kevin's obviously come in. Stephen and Donny know the group well, as you know. <laughs> very well yourself they obviously have a fair understanding of, of what makes Mayo tick I think what Mayo probably need and, uh, and and I don't know you might disagree with me here they probably need a bit of balance in their game so you know rather than just be associated with a running team you know being able to mix it up throw Shea inside maybe come up with something different but I'll tell you one thing though what they have and it can carry a long way and uh, you know yourself in sport like once they get a bit of momentum you know, they've got a fanatical fan base. They've got a real good support. You know, like Castle Bar was rocking on Saturday night. And Kerry, look, Kerry were very, very below par, par and they were poor. But it was the start that Mayo made and then they kept the foot on the throttle and they kept going hard. And, and that's one thing that I said in the show, I don't know if you remember two weeks ago, you take Shawnee O'Shea and Clifford out of Kerry and it's very, very level. The playing field is very, very level. And watching the dubs on Sunday, there's nothing really out there that Mayo should fear. That's the bottom line, you know. There's nothing really to should fear. Actually, talking to Joe Brennan last week, and he actually he made that point. Uh, like, I know probably the people were probably giving out about the Dublin uh, arrogance or confidence, whatever way you want to put it. But, you know, he, uh, he just maintained that the standards that Dublin ha- have come back to the pack. It's not the pack have caught up to yeah. Dublin. He, 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 t- yeah. he thinks that the standard of football has has come back from where it was five or six years ago. Um, people can debate that. But, yeah, I, I hope to agree with you, Stephen. I think the, uh, there's no one there that Mayo would fear. Um, I think they are kicking the ball a, a bit more this year. It is obviously early days. The two goals they got, absolutely, you won't see two better finishes in the country uh, that weekend. They're really, really well-taken goals. I will say probably the, like they're, from two unforced errors from, from Kerry, one from the kick out and one from a, a miscued ball by Jason Foley. And but they, look at they, yeah. they, they they're attacking the waves. They're you know, like on the horn, it was more so a running game and you know, I have no problem saying in terms of uh, as 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 someone in in, in the full forward line, it, it would be it can be frustrating because you don't actually know when when is that your first instinct from the players out the field to right, I, if the ball is on here, I'm going to kick it. Their first instinct for me over the last four years was right. I'm going to take a solo straight off the bat here. It doesn't matter if there's someone on. Yeah. Or so as long as you know, I think everyone's on the same page here. It's uh, basically get the ball head up first. Can I see anyone free? Okay, then I'll take a solo. But it, it is, you know, then the thirty yard kick passes. Um, it's key just to keep that ball transitioning. And you know, Mayo in fairness, that they do like. They, there's a fella like Tommy Connor as well. I haven't seen him in the league, and I think, I actually think I I'd have him higher than I'd rate him higher than Ryan O'Donoghue. I I he is like he in 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 for raw pace. He 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 yeah. he'd, he'd come he'd come close to Jack McCaffrey. He is just so direct. Yeah. Um. I I'd like to get him. I'd like to see Ryan develop a left foot. I'd like to see Tommy develop a left foot as well. They they do. If they're in trouble, they can't use it. But to be, as you know yourself, Stephen, when you come up against the top, top defenders, yeah, in today's age, you need your two feet. You're not going to get away with, you know, Clifford, you see Sean O'Shea, the two boys, we were mentioning them there. We're, we'll be on about the, the five more skillful players uh, in the country. And, like, you know, the, all the boys will have the two feet. If they're in trouble, it keeps their, the corner for you, you saw Brian Hurley, actually, for Cork the last day, uh, two feet. He had Fitzsimons in a knot. And like Fitzsimons yeah. is a top top quarterback, like so. Um, no, I like I'm I'm going off on tangents there. I, <laughs> um, like, no, 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 you're right. I, I have to I have to say, and uh, Tommy Tommy Conroy, his nickname is Tommy Goal, isn't it? Tommy Goal. Is that, no, is that, that was, his nickname? No, Tommy. No, that, that was actually an old one. That was a, that was another guy. There's two Tommy Conroys. Another guy from uh, North Mayo. Uh, the, this current right. Tommy Conroy is from from the south south of Mayo, south of the county, but. Uh, 
look at yeah. him, look at Tommy. He's he's obviously he's nice for goal as well. But um, no, that that was a yeah. different guy. But but no, what's your thoughts on Tommy? What's would you, like have you have you watched much of him or any opinion? Like James Carr as well. Like the, the thing I like about Mayo is obviously Killian O'Connor. He's he's coming off the bench. He's he's having an impact. Aiden, you're saying about being in yeah. the full forward line there. I'm still I'm still not sure. Has he full confidence in himself to take on that score? Um, you need to be getting two or three scores of him. If you want to play Aiden inside, he has to be putting pressure on himself to get to, to tick off two or three scores yeah. to keep the to keep the back yeah. line guessing here. James James Carr James Carr seems to have proved an awful lot. You know what? And a new a new management team can do that, and they, you know, you can like what you'll probably find is that a few periphery players from Mayo might start stepping up to the mark now, and maybe finding a new lease of life under a new setup. You know, maybe they might find like uh, obviously like Connor off the serve and move back to centre half back. You know, they might see something that previous management team hasn't seen. You know, and they might just something, and that could just trigger a player and just you know nearly nearly a, a rebirth of a player. You know, and and kickstart is. His career again, you know, but uh, no, listen, look, Mayo unfortunately were impressive, but you know, let's be honest, like it's game three of the National League. But, but I, mean, uh, I think we said this in the show a few weeks ago, we said this in the show a few weeks ago because this re- the, st- the season has been restructured and it's such a condensed season, you sort of need to be going well in the league, like you do need to be going well because you only have that two week break between, like, I think Donegal. Did I read something? No, not Donegal. Who's out on the... Somebody's out on the 9th of April. Someone's out in the Championship on the 9th of April and the National League finishes. Yes, it was a Roscommon article. So, for example, if Roscommon were to make a league final, okay, just for talk's sake, yeah. Roscommon would play their last league game on the Sunday. They would be in Crow Park the following Sunday, possibly playing Mayo, just for talk's sake, right, in a league final. They could play Mayo in a league final and a week later meet each other in the Championship. Like, neither county would want that. Do you know what I mean? You know, so like, but that's that's the whole importance of having that momentum. Like, and you know yourself after a league, if you go away for eight weeks, you can take two weeks off, send the boys back to the clubs, come back mini pre-season. Now you're just coming into the league. If you finish the league off poorly, you're going into the championship in an awful damn squib. You know, so it's uh, it, it's definitely something that, that I think counties would need to be careful about, you know. That, that's, that, that has to be... Um... <coughs> that, that fixture battle like, like I, I don't see anyone that you know they're finishing is it the the second last week in July I, 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 I for, for myself Stephen the August bank holiday would be a, an obvious choice to have an all the final that extra two weeks as you said there like to have that to happen if, like the league final and it's it's not beyond the realms of possibility here that Roscommon and Mayo would be in the league final like that would be an absolute disaster um for, for yeah. more teams, and it, yeah. it'd be it'd be it'd be shadow boxing. Would they put out a full team? I, I I don't I don't really know. To be honest, it's it's I I think I think um obviously look at uh, the club players. I think the divided season is working, but I I think maybe an extra week or two to allow you know that maybe couple of weeks break from the league to championship is is important, and it doesn't um. It doesn't dilute it, if you know what I mean. Like ah, uh, like yeah, a week, a week for me is too is too soon, uh, especially for that. Um, I don't know what's your opinion on that, but uh, that's, probably tough that's on a player too because there's it's tough on a player, but there's Paddy McBurney whose season's probably over. You know, torn hamstring, season over. You know, such a short season. If you get an injury towards the tail end of the National League, you're more, you're more or less out for the rest of the season. You know, that's the reality. So yeah. like with 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 Kerry, obviously. They were a bit of a jam squid. Uh, obviously, Jack Jack O'Connor will not be a happy man uh, going down the road that oh. night. Uh, that it just yeah. proves, I suppose, it just proves that Kerry Kerry's depth when it comes to the top teams, like like um, unlike, uh, like Dublin, obviously, a few years ago, if they put out yeah. a mixture of A and B, uh, A and B, we say players, you know, they'd they'd usually win the game. Like, Kerry, did this prove to yeah. us now Kerry just don't have that same depth yeah. when it comes outside the 15? And uh, we, we said this, you know, like, like you know, Clifford is a special player, Shawnee O'Shea. I remember going to Kerry, right? What age are the two boys now? What age is Shawnee O'Shea and Clifford? 23, 23, 24? 23. Yeah, yeah, about that. Nice. I remember going to Kerry. I remember going to Kerry about seven years ago with Marie and the two girls, right? And we were sitting in a restaurant in Kerry and obviously... It's all anybody ever wants to talk about is football down there. And we were chatting about football. And I had heard about this like this guy, David Clifford, playing colleges football, you know, schools football. And obviously being a teacher, 
you would always keep a close eye on the school circuit and stuff and who's playing well and what schools are going well. And I said about, I said to the guy about this by David Clifford and he says, no, no, no. He says, he's not the best one. He says, Shawnee O'Shea is even better. This is this guy I was chatting to one night, you know, and mm-hmm. he was saying, Shawnee, something else. This, this was now when they were only 15, 16, you, you know. And uh, so they obviously rate Shawnee O'Shea extremely highly in Kerry, obviously, like we all do, you know. But if you take those two men out of Kerry, which they did the other night, they look bang ordinary, but they look bang ordinary, you know. And that's that's the thing, you know. And look, every team needs a real marquee forward. And listen, Enda, I think the dubs are the same without Con. I'm telling you now. I think when you take Con out of Dublin, the dynamic changes for Dublin quite a bit, you know, because Dean Rock maybe doesn't have the legs that he had before. Kilkenny's playing a lot deeper now as well, you know. At, some of the forwards that are coming in for Dublin now, would the scare you? Would the scare a top end county defender? Probably not. Probably not, and you know. Would, well, like, who, who's going to scare you if, if they don't take... If, if a corner forward or a full forward doesn't take their man on? As you said there, the players you mentioned there yep. are kind of... You know, they, they'll win their primary ball, but they won't take you on. they look for their pass off. Khan's first instinct is win the ball, right, can I, I'm going to go directly at you here, can I get a goal? His first instinct, can I get a goal out of this possession here? Yeah, and if not, exactly. He'll, he'll, he'll go from there, like, um, same with, yeah. same, the same with Clifford's instinct, the top, top forward, student, as you know, uh, the first instinct is, right, can I, can, what can I, what's the most I can get out of this play here? Um, actually, on, on to that, actually, we're on about the two, the two carry points, we're on about the, the five, the five most skillful players in the country, yeah. who do you have? Clifford obviously won. Well, you, you've, put me, you, you've put me on the spot because I was more annoyed. I, I got a, I, there was a leak in the camp. I seen your list and I thought it was completely <laughs> anti-Northern. It was anti-Northern. It was disgraceful. There was no Ulster players. You know, oh, we, we actually have good footballers. But hi, we have good footballers up here. We just, we don't fight all the time. We're, we do have good footballers, you know. So, yeah. I, I, think, I think I left, I think I left but, out Reno Neal. I think I left out Reed O'Neill. What's that? that? I think I left out Reed O'Neill. Unbelievable. Reed O'Neill. Unbelievable. I don't, know, I don't know how. I don't know how I left that man out. When you said she's no Ulster that, players here, I was like, ah? Very disgusting. Nice. Absolutely disgusting. Disgusting. You left out, you left out so, so, many, so many brilliant fellas. No, listen. Look, you know, from I suppose what you could do in them, you could nearly categorize, categorize them for me, right? You could nearly have, who's still doing it at the top? You know, the likes of Conor McManus, you know, obviously Michael Murphy retired this year. You know, there still is a, an element. You talked about Killian O'Connor, another great who's been <laughs> around a long time. Here in Kilkenny. Keir Kilkenny yeah. is, is, for me, yeah. is probably one of the most skillful footballers <laughs> because I'll tell you why. He he was doing, I was, I was actually down in Dublin with Shane doing, you know, one of Shane's coaching coaching yeah. um, clinics. And Paul, Paul Galvin was, was one of the guest coaches along with myself and Jared. And uh, Jared yes. was on last week. And Galvin's, like for a lot of coaches there, Paul's Paul's session probably would have seemed very simplistic. But as a coach, yeah. I could see very clearly the message he was delivering. Uh, the, the ability and the, the get to pass off your left side just as equally comfortable as your right side. You know, what that does in a game, it just changes the dynamics of a game for you as a player. It opens up so many more doors. And Kieran Kilkenny was the master of creating those backdoor cuts for Dublin. Because he's coming along the, the Hogan stand, heading towards the hill, he was as easily comfortable giving an inside pass with his left as he was on the other side with his right, you know. And a lot of footballers can't do that. So Kilkenny, for me, like is one of the most you know skillful players that that, that played. The likes of McManus, obviously, you talked about Rion O'Neill, but you could you could probably throw you could probably throw and a couple of new kids in the block. You know, the likes of that young uh, Cush lad and Tyrone who's coming through. Adrian's young fat is a brilliant footballer. Peter Canavan's young lad, obviously, another stylish footballer. You seen are the, they, the are, famous total? Are they, are they at that level yet, though, Simon? Are they at that level no, yet, though? No, not. No, not. But the, but they, they 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 have extreme potential. Young Garland from from Monaghan, you know, Kieran Bannigan from Monaghan. Like there's, there's some <laughs> there's some brilliant young talent being coming through. There really is in 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 Ireland now. Obviously, going to the likes of Clare, you know, Hidden James. Obviously, David Tuberty led the line for a long time. Now, young Keelan Saxon is a wonderful footballer. Yeah. You know, uh, Jimmy. What's Jimmy? Jimmy's um, Jimmy's second name, Claire lad. Oh, Jesus, it's going to head for another brilliant footballer. But, you know, the, in some of those counties where maybe not, you know, the, there's maybe not, they don't get the limelight the way the bigger counties get. Brian Hurley put on an exhibition at the weekend as well. Another brilliant footballer, you know, guys like that. Because we're instantly going to be drawn to your Cliffords and your 
uh, uh, what do you call it, your Cliffords and your Shawnee O'Shea's and stuff like that. But listen, a man that came on at the weekend and won the game for Fermanagh, Sean Quigley, you know, probably not your modern s and you know, dedicated man or whatever, not big into the gym and the weights and stuff and, you know, doesn't have the the, the, the physique maybe of a, of a Brian Fenton or whatever, but still a skill of a footballer, Keith Byrne of Leitrim, another brilliant player who you would yes. probably know very well yeah, from yeah. Colin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Very good. He's currently the top scorer in the front you know. Uh, Porter, uh, another comment here, Porter, Porter, uh, Jason Duffy from MMA actually put on an uh, exhibition in the first half, and he scored four points against Riscombe in the last day. Um, what's it's actually Jason what's Duffy's a real, yeah? What's his what's his he, he's a real he, Jason Duffy, Duffy's a real raw forward out now. For <laughs> you talk about it, you know, being able to come on, on like Duffy. If I'm I think I'm, I'm if I'm correct, if Jason Duffy's same club as Kane McKeever, he's St. Patrick's Collihanna, him and Aidan Nugent play for the same club. Um, you know, a really really good footballer, uh, very aggressive, very direct. You know, Norma have very a lot of footballers like that, you know, uh, although they were very poor in the second half on Sunday now, but you go into Derry as well. Uh, uh, Potty McGrogan's playing some serious football at the minute for them. <laughs> um, you know, like McGuigan, McGuigan is class. He is class. And uh, McGuigan, for me, I went down to RD a couple of weeks ago, and McGuigan's ability to kick off his left foot and his right foot was a joy to watch. A real joy to watch. Like, you know, he, McGuigan's, McGuigan's up there, one of the best forwards in Ireland at the minute. Like, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. So if I if I put a gun to your head, who who's your top five? Who, you you can't you can't name everyone. Who's your top five? All Ulster men. Rian O'Neill. <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> Clifford. Clifford's a superstar. Clifford, you know, he's Messi Ronaldo. He's out there on his own at the minute. You know, Clifford. Yeah. Clifford's been up one. Um, very hard to put them in order now. I'm going to go Clifford number one. Con. Who's your number one then? Clifford. Clifford. Yeah, Con. 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 Okay. Adam McGuigan up there. I would unquestionably have McGuigan up there. So are we, are we actually are we actually going number in the one to one to five? We're we're doing that, are we? I think I think we're gonna go well I'm I'll tell you what I'll go then. I'll go Clifford one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go Shane Watt number two. Oh yeah, right. You you, you retired Shane Watt, you see, you retired him there, you forgot about him, you retired <laughs> him because you're a male you, you were you you were refusing to acknowledge all the way. <laughs> Did you forget about that point? Did you forget about that point? We kicked 10 points last year. Yeah, well, Con, I'm telling you, that's Con. Con will be back this year. I'm going to go Clifford, Shane Walsh. I'm going to go McGuigan. Right? I'm going to go. I'm going to go Con. Yeah? What's that for? That's four, man. Four. Right, you give, me, you give me your four first and I'll throw in the fifth one then. Um, <coughs> I had it. Um, I would go, I'd say the top the top three for me is fairly obvious. Um, uh, I did say in the group I have my top tier. They're my three in terms of, I wouldn't have McGregor in my top three yet. Simply because uh, he hasn't done it in the biggest stage just yet. That's the only reason. Um, I'm not. I'm not disputing. He's a top quality forward, but the three boys we've named out there in Clifford, Shane Walsh, and Khan, them three boys have all done it on the biggest stage. Then you have then four, four, five. Uh, Jack McNulty saying Sean O'Shea. Yeah, like there's like you. I forgot about Kieran Kilkenny. Honestly, like I, I actually I don't know how I forgot about him. But like you're Kilkenny, you have Reid O'Neill, you have McGregor. You have Sean O'Shea. For me, they're the four. Put two, two of them in your last two, your last two spots. Yeah, you see, you probably, you could probably write it, it. We've gone in with no real categories or rules behind it. We've sort of thrown it out. That's very general. But I would say, if you're looking at longevity, you know, the likes of Kilkenny would have to be in there. You know, Brian Fenton, even possibly, you know, probably one of the most stylish midfielders in the country. You know, like so, lads that have done it, you know, probably on a on a regular basis and as you say, at the highest level. You know, but maybe McGuigan hasn't had the opportunities to showcase his talents much on the highest yeah, level yeah, because yeah, 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 yeah. you know over the last couple <laughs> no, of years. You know, the, and that's look at yeah. look at like the, the boys are like teams. The, the stronger teams are the traditional counties. We say, um, you know, the players are very lucky. Like they have the platform obviously to go on and, and showcase that talent. 
Uh, yeah. If you're quick and with, yeah. a, with a job, we'll say, or it was with Galway or whoever, like Mayo. Like, I, I, I had to laugh, with, like, the last day with, with Mayo in terms of TG, uh, TG Carr with the coverage, like, after the, I don't know, did you see the interview after the game with Kevin McStay and um, Mihal? Mihal does the interview, like, but, okay. you know, Mihal was, was going, like, like he was going to the top straight as in all Ireland surely for me own this year and Kevin McStay was just like ah here now jeez can you know can the Jets here it's only it's the the round three in the in February here like and Kerry were missing probably <laughs> four four or five of the main starters here like and it's just you know like people and this is not a this is not a criticism like but people. I suppose it's just the story behind Mayo. They just love it's nearly like clickbait. If you mention Mayo, yeah, people just nearly click into the article because you know it's. Uh, am I being am I being or biased here uh, by saying this, Stephen? What like is it is it just you know people just love to kind of get on the not on the bandwagon? But I thought he was going from naught to ninety there within within seventy minutes of the game. The Mihal probably. I think I think it's probably just. The way you know the way they started, you know, they obviously last year's all Ireland finalists, Galway, you know, they, they showed a lot of resilience the first day, got a draw, went the athletic rounds, which is a really difficult place to go to. People yeah. probably don't realise how passionate Armagh fans are and how difficult a place it is to go. I don't think Armagh lose too many more games in the athletic rounds, to be honest with you. Okay, they didn't lose that day actually, they drew with Mayo, but they got a really good result in the athletic rounds that they should have won the game. You know, they blitzed Kerry. Kerry had a send for the Cavalry. They got first half display against Kerry was impressive, no matter what Kerry team's out there. Like, I was chatting to Billy Lee a few weeks ago. I was doing a podcast with Billy Lee, the former Limerick manager. Billy's a real yeah. gentleman. And, uh, and I said to him, you know, Kerry are obviously going to go experimental. And he, 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 just, he just leaned back and he says, look, there's never been a poor <laughs> Kerry team, he says. You know, and he's right. Like, you know, Kerry don't do, don't do sort of second-rate teams. Like, so, like, they'll be disappointed, as you say. McGinney come down the road this week to Kerry. I'm sure he'll be feeling the backlash because Kerry play Armagh this week and I will say Jack will circle the wagons this week in training and there will be serious questions asked. Like, serious mm-hmm. questions, you know. There'll be, there'll be a lot of cold shoulders being had in the Kerry camp this week, I can assure you that. Oh, um, I'll tell you. No, no doubt that, about it. There won't, no there won't be too much communi- there won't be too much communication if you just literally said the silence would be deafening from those players. Um, it'll be, he, he'll put out. He'll put out his. Um, I would say he'll probably put out his strongest. They need points. Kerry need points now. They have only two points in the board, Here. so they need. And uh, I was looking at it, right. I was looking at it, like as good as Roscommon have started, right? Roscommon have started really well, but if Monaghan were to win this week against Roscommon and Clonus, which is what could perceivably happen, right? Roscommon yeah. still have to play Kerry. You know, they still have to go to Donegal in the last. Game. They still have to play Mayo. Yeah. You know, you could possibly be perceiving it could what what could happen in Division One for me and is I think by the end of Division One you could be going into the last two games in contention for a league final and also in contention for relegation, and that's the way I think it'll be. I think that's what's going to happen in Division One this year. I think personally, Donegal are in big trouble. I think they're in real big trouble. I don't like the vibes coming out of Donegal, and I'm not talking about the Donegal senior setup. That's unfair. I'm talking about the academy structure. You know, Carl Lacey leaving his post. All the academy structures or all the academy coaches stepping away, that's not great for cohesion in the county. And it doesn't really feel there seems to be something happening there. I don't know what it is, but all doesn't seem to be well there and the behind the scenes. And that, that that can feed into a group two boss, you know. It definitely can. So yeah, like uh, to be honest, I think the two of us probably agreeing here that Johnny Gall look to be our number one choice to, to be relegated this year. And the number two uh, we're not so sure yet, are we? Are we saying that? Um, no. No. Was not. that so many? You broke up. There, sorry, you broke up there. Sorry, Anna. I said. I said. Watch God. Are we? Are we both saying? Well, I'm saying this. I don't know. Do you agree with this? But Johnny Gold for me are the, are the number one favourites to go down, and then the second team is. Oh, I. I, I think. Lot, I team. think the will go down. I think the will go down. Now, the only thing I'd say to you. The only thing I'd say to you. They have played Kerry. Um, they've played Kerry already. Um, and you're probably looking at their next fixtures thinking, right, they're, they're probably going to be looking at Roscommon. Yeah. And they're probably going to be looking at, at Armagh. You know, at, at possibly, hopefully, picking up points. But they'll not be easy games either. You know, they'll not be easy games. You know? No. 
So as I'm, I'm, I'm going off on tangent. Right, we've got, what's the last two? Pick your, pick your last two the most skilled for pairs. Go into your head. Your so I went with, I went with, Clifford. I've got four in there. I've got, I've got Clifford. I've Clifford. Uh, I have Clifford. Shane I have Shane, Shane Walsh. Walsh. I have McGuigan. I have McGuigan. I've called. Con, and I'm going to throw in. I'm going to throw in Ryan O'Neill for his flexibility and his ability to play both full forward and midfield. And it, it balances it out nicely. It, it keeps my Ulster partisan, uh, you know, <laughs> two. You know, <laughs> we've got. We've got how many? We've got two. Well, Shane Walsh, Clifford, Ryan, Ryan, obviously Ulster. Con Leinster, McGuigan, Ulster, two Ulster, one Munster, one Connacht. Very good. Well, it makes um, sense what, because Ulster is province by a mile. You know what I mean? So it makes sense. <laughs> to, who's here? Tom. From the old days, it would be Morris Fitz, Matt Connor. I uh, don't dispute that, yeah. Um, Morris, Fitz, Mac, Morris yeah. Fitz, unbelievable. Unbelievable. I remember standing on the hill watching Armagh playing in 1999, I think it was. Armagh just beaten down in the Ulster final. And I was standing on the hill with a few friends and Morris Fisk cut in off the end or off the sideline and he toe top dummied with his right foot and buried one in the bottom corner of his left foot. It was actually a thing. It was a thing of beauty. It was beautiful to watch. He was sensational. What? Sensational. The, the, one, the, one thing, the one thing I will say with that statement is I, 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 went to, I went to college in UL and the one thing that struck me straight away we obviously played Sagerson like and the Kerry boys and the skill set was always left and right. Like it was literally whatever yeah. like I like obviously now modern football. Every county is trying to go down that road, but Kerry traditionally like they they, they seem to be way yeah. ahead of the trend in that in the in the skills of the game. I just uh, for, for the, I I just don't yeah. know how other teams did cop onto that or just do you know do, do, like it really struck me yeah. as a as a probably nineteen twenty year old playing with the Kerry boys and the just the the confidence the air of I'm not going to say people would say arrogance, but that, to me that's confidence because that's confidence coming from the traditional county like Kerry that they're used to winning, and that they they brought that with them. And it was just it was just an interesting insight I I, I I learned as a as a wee nipper and seeing these boys and just mm -hmm. uh, like left and right, left hand, right hand. I just found it very interesting. But you know, like I, I can't remember as a young lad being coached right. Someone telling me right. You know, get your right side going here. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it was never yeah. really strongly coached into into. I, I can remember anyway as a as a young lad. It's um, it's the wall and the ball. It's the wall and the ball uh, mantra, isn't it? Like, you know, get get a ball, get a wall, and you know, right foot, left foot, right hand, left. Hand. And it was obviously ingrained into those young players at a very very young age. And like, it didn't happen by accident. You know, football no. was religion. It was their life. You know, it was a passion and. You know, like I, I, th I think myself to like uh, about it now, and maybe there is an overemphasis now, and uh, you know, at S and C, and maybe you know, foam rollers and bands and having this. But how many young players actually own a football? You know, this is the question I always ask at coach education evenings. Like, and it was that day with Shane doing Shane's coaching day in, in Dublin that day, where I get the insight into Paul Galvin, where he's talking about this, the emphasis he put that day on actually coaching your teams. To be able to play off both sides is so important, like, you know, so important. Like it just it opens up just completely different different doors for you when you're attacking. You know, you're it just it, you don't become predictable then, you know, and and that's probably one of the reasons. If you look at the if you look at the players that we've named there in in that top five, they're all probably comfortable probably off both feet, you know, and that's 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 a big big asset to have in the modern game, huge asset to have. Now, the you one know. thing, I don't know what you think, Stephen, but the, I'm getting off topic here now, but we'll go back to the games in a sec. But the one thing I always found strange was, obviously, you're involved in a skill-based sport, right? You have your SSC testing, you have your fitness testing, you've got your nutrition, your skin folds, how, how fat you are, basically, but you never had a skills test. Well, funny, funny, I I've, I've did a small bit of coaching with Fermanagh Hurlers, as you know, right? And yeah. that's one of the things that's one of the things Enda, that I have definitely taken from Hurling is the amount of contact, ball contact, you know, you know, hurl the ball contact that the players have and the skill levels and the amount of touches. And, you know, Joe, Joe Baldwin, who's a, who's a brilliant guy. Joe's over the team as a manager. Joe talks about the wrist action. He says, he used to say to me back at Christmas time when I was taking a few sessions, he says like, our wrist action's not there yet. He says, but they've got two wall ball sessions to do this week. So the players had a log 
two wall ball sessions every week, you know, on their own, where they're having to do just for talk's sake, I don't know the ins and outs, maybe a hundred touches in, in 60 seconds yeah. or something, you know, something really, really like targets and things like that. It's interesting like, because it's something we probably don't put a huge emphasis on in football because when we arrive, we're probably taking it for granted that most players you know, have been doing skill work on their own and maybe skill work only takes up a minute part of the session because there's this whole big parava now around, you know, games-based coaching, games-based coaching. It has to be games-based coaching, but there has to be, there has to be still an element though, and, uh, and there has to be still a window for skills. There has to be, you know, for the development of skills and particularly in the, at those younger ages between 8 and 12 where where young people will acquire 80% <laughs> of their technical ability at that age. You know, they will acquire 80% of their technical ability between the ages of 8 and 12. You know, if you don't get them then, you're probably wasting your time at 20 years of age trying to coach a young lad how to play off his left foot. You know, he's not, if he can't do it at 20, he's probably never going to do it. You know, let's be honest, you know. Yeah, look, it's... Um... Yeah, no, it's it's just interesting. I, I just can't... Um, I was going to say something there now. What the hell was I going to say about the skills? Um, I've lost my train of thought. All right. Um, yeah. What... Ad, what uh, games, 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 games. Uh, where are we at here? We're at the... Um, Roscommon. Actually, you're, you're watching the Roscommon and I game. What did, you, what did you reckon of that? Well, I, I thought it was a bit of a mad one because in the first half, I thought Armagh played some really good football and they played some really good football against against the stiff breeze. The breeze and the hide, it was very similar to the breeze against Tyrone. Um, it's interesting that Roscommon, I don't know if they won the toss, I don't know if they lost the toss, but in both those games, they've decided to play against the breeze, whether that was by choice or by accident, I don't know. Or Sorry, decided to play with the breeze in the first half and against it in the second half. And it's an interesting one because in both games, they've been very similar. You know, they've gone in at halftime a point up against Tyrone. They went in against Armagh a point up. You're sort of thinking Armagh come back and it's level early in the second half or it's a point or two in it. And you're sort of thinking, right, you're waiting on Armagh to kick on. It was, it was nearly very similar to the Tyrone game in that Tyrone created a lot of chances and couldn't take them. But I'll tell you what Amy has done there, which... Um, it has has definitely impressed me. Is there there seems to be a bit of resilience about the camp. There seems to be a wee bit of a wee bit of resilience, a wee bit of gallinus, you know. <laughs> and they're they're digging in, they're digging in. And what they have and uh, is probably what they've been missing over the last couple of years. They now have a bench to choose from. You know, <coughs> the young young Carl has made a massive impact at the Nets. Big Walsh, uh, the under twenty, Keith Doyle, middle of the field, uh, uh, Ben O'Carroll. Um, uh, what do you call him? Um, uh, Dara Craig and the, t- the two murders are back. They're both fit, you know, and they're both fighting fit. And what's happened there now, Enda, is they can now bring the likes of Doney off the bench. They can bring a Connor Cox off the bench. Boys that are going to make a big impact with experience and Gail and know how, you know, and that's a big thing. Whereas Roscommon probably weren't bringing that quality off the bench in previous years, you know, that sort of way, you know. Yeah, so yeah, I think in yeah. spring, I, young lad like Gareth Craig with 15, 20 to go, you know, it's a big I asset. Can't to, I can't wait to the kind of championship this this year, Stephen. I can't, like honestly, the three, like the three kind of like I'm going to be uh, biased here again, but the three kind of teams are all one, two, three in Division One football. Like it's very, very sad yeah. to have three teams in in Division One. At, no, five. <laughs> I've said I've said this before. I've said this before. The only two championships <laughs> worth watching are Ulster because yeah. you know you have three who can perceivably win it. But there's actually a wee mini. There's nearly another wee mini championship in Connacht happening this year, as you know. Yeah. Galway, Roscommon, and uh, uh, Mayo are the one side of the draw. So like it's a huge prize for a Lincoln or a Sligo or here or even a London to get to a Connacht yeah. final, you know, and that's that's a big, big prize for one of those teams, you know, and, and who knows, London were there before. <laughs> uh, I think you might have been playing in that game, actually, were you, yeah, um, yeah, against yeah. Mayo? 2014. Yeah, yeah. 2014. Um, yeah, no, look, yeah, I'm yeah. sure Andy, Andy, Andy over Leitrim would be eyeing that. That'd be a huge achievement for Leitrim to get to a Connacht final. It'd be great. Big day. Be a big day out. Play, play, say they played in the Connacht final, you know, big day out. I'd love to So, yeah, I, I'd like the depth. Yeah, like Jamie, I actually just saw the the highlights off the team. Like Jamie was quite animated after the game. He knew that was a big result for Ross Cameron because obviously the game's coming down the road. Like it's any any victory. Like he's six points now. They surely they should be safe. They should be safe now. But like, and I don't understand like why 
there was a fuss made over, like I've seen a few pe- things popping up about, oh, Davy Burke, I was like an all Ireland final. Of course it is. Of course it is. Why should he not celebrate? They've put, a, they've put a big shift in over the last two or three months. They've come out, they've won their first game in Division 1. They've beaten Tyrone. They've beaten Armagh. You know, like, like why, why should they not? They've beaten Galway in their own backyard. Why should they not celebrate success? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. You, you'll regret the day that you don't celebrate success because you have so many more bad days than you have good days. And when the good days come around, you fucking savour them and you enjoy them. You savour them and you enjoy them, you know, because they're very, very fucking scarce. You know, they don't, they're, like the Dublin six in a row is freakish. It's freakish. We'll probably never see that again, you know, as such. Like, but like they took coaching to the next level, the, the level of player they had, the depth they had, the whole lot of money, the finance, the whole. But like success doesn't come around for counties like Roscommon in Division One on a regular basis. Roscommon had won two games in Division One, right? The last four years they were there, they won two games in the last four years they were in Division One, and I think both of them were against Cavan. I could be wrong, but I think both of them were against Cavan. Like that was the first. Yeah proper, you know, Division 1 scout that Roscommon have taken. So look, enjoy it. Enjoy it while it lasts. I'm telling you now. Enjoy it while it lasts. And there was another thing which maybe might be worth noting. It popped up somewhere. One of the Five Nations or Six Nations games. A couple of rugby players having a beer after the match. Imagine the Roscommon players having a for a few pints. You would have advised writing on Twitter and everything Roscommon, drink on the drink, disgrace, blah, blah, blah. Like, lads should be allowed to go out on a Sunday night and have a few beers with a match the following Sunday. One week away, for fuck's sake. Like. And I think that's it's a big part of the game that it's gone now, and I think we've got why, we've why got you, why professional. Think, <coughs> Sorry, I just caught across here. Why? Why do you think that that has always been the kind of tradition in J? As in, like, oh, lads, there's Men's obviously it. a balance to it. There's obviously a balance to it. But like, why has it always been the case in 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 J that basically, if you want the if you have a few points after the game and the game the next week. You're, you're, you're the devil. You're the devil in disguise. Like, what? Crazy. what? Crazy. Well, I'll tell you what. I look back on in fondness on, on the couple of years I had with the Carlo lads. Like, and I knew I knew where they were coming from base wise. I knew that they didn't have much success for 10 years. And in 2018, when we got promoted, we had one of the best nights of our lives after the, the night we got promoted. The bus journey back from Belfast to Carlo was something else. It was ridiculous. Like, it was actually, it was, it was, it was mental. I don't know how me and the wife ended up on the bus, but we drove past Newry and didn't get off and ended up going straight to Carlo. So it was great crack. But but we, we, we had a brilliant night. But I'll tell you a good one, Andy. Here's one for you. There was a lad in Carlo made his own beer, and it was called 56 South, right? So we yeah. played Louth in the Leinster Championship in Port Leash. And we beat them by 11 points, which is unheard of for Carlo, unheard of. Won by 11 points, and he, he came in to me and he says, is there any chance I can take a few cases of beer into the change rooms to the boys? I said to Turlick, what do you think? And Turlick was, oh, Jesus, the Leinster Council. I said, fuck the Leinster Council. Get the fucking beer into the boys and enjoy it. And we walked down the corner with a couple of crates of beer, went into the change rooms, and I still have a great photo, actually. I have it on my phone saved. Like, great photo of us all just sitting in the change rooms, chilling out, beer in the hand, you know, having a fucking great time Life was good, sun was shining. We went out two weeks later and battered Kildare off the field. Like so it didn't impact the lads. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, the lads and they'll remember those moments, they'll remember those days, you know, whereas like I think the game now and it has got very sterile. It's actually got to the st- it's actually got to the stage now where some teams aren't even aren't even celebrating winning a, a championship or a provincial title. That's that's what it's got to. They're not even celebrating, you know, they're just like hold the cup up, set it down, move on. You know why like You've got to celebrate success. You've got to celebrate your wins. You've got to celebrate your victories, you know, because they, they don't come around every day of the week. And that's a big thing, like, you know. No, it's, yeah, I, yeah. Look, and the team bonding as well, see, that, that can't be underestimated yeah. how important that is with teams. Like, yeah. it's, you're, you're yeah. training, like, obviously, uh, with the divided season here now, it's, it's got, got a bit better. But, like, you know, 10 years ago when I was playing, like, you're going, you're going 10 months of the year. So if you're going large chunks, yeah. like, you need, you need two or three separate definitely pre-championship there's always a weekend away there somewhere or training yeah. camp you get out yeah. Or, yeah. because you know it's it's a very serious environment but it's nice too to to kind of you know get to know the lads in a social outing yeah and just shoot the breeze without fucking someone trying to take the head off and then we went up we went up, to the John, we went up to the johnson house that year 2018 we went up to the johnson house that year in the middle of january right for two nights and we did a training camp, and we did it. You know, we, we were we were pretty professional about it. We we had a couple of training sessions on Saturday, and then by by chance, uh, Antrim Antrim were staying there as well on the Saturday. 
So we, we decided we'd play them in a bit of a challenge match. So, uh, go right, go right. Adams was actually over at the time, but the game got a bit feisty. <laughs> and it ended in a, in, a, in a it ended in a thirty man melee, and Andrew actually walked off the field. So <laughs> I was saying to Turlock, like I'm sort of worried about tonight. We're down for dinner and <laughs> we're mixing in the game as a melee. I walked into the bar that night about half eleven, and both squads were in the bar singing Celtic Symphony. Chris Kerr was leading the charge for. Antrim, Craig Carney from, from uh, Carlo was leading the charge and the boys had a fantastic night and we got up the next morning for breakfast we're all in for breakfast a few beers myself and Greg sat at the barn and a few beers as well and we got up for breakfast the next morning lads were mixing as well the next morning then we went and did our training session at 11 o'clock on the Sunday and had our lunch and went down the road but like that was that was a huge part of our cohesion and building our togetherness that year you know and, and, and building a bit of spirit like you know and you, you look back and fond, on fond memories in those <laughs> nights you sort of remember the nights more than you remember the, the you know the, the the slogan and the training, you know. How how do you find getting on that topic scene? How do you find the weekends away? How like eh, it's such a confined eh, you know, as in like you're trying to get a lot in in the two days maybe. What, what way did you kind of work with Carlo? And in your experience, was our structure. I always felt we had a good structure. We would have done a session. We I always felt we had a good structure. We did a session early on the Saturday just for talk's sake, right? So you're down maybe on the Friday evening. Friday evening, okay. Say you're right, just for toxic, say you're on the Friday evening. Bit of bit of bit of video work, team meeting, bit of briefing, here's what we're doing. Uh, you know, off the off the bed early enough, maybe dinner or whatever, off the bed or whatever, our, our free time. No no booze at all on the Friday. Saturday we would have got up, would have done a training session about eleven o'clock on the Saturday, uh, and uh, we would have given them a bit of free time. Uh, boys maybe would have got a bit of a snack, bit of a late lunch. We would have back out at three o'clock and done maybe like a tactical session or something along those lines. But I went into the gym. Lads may have done a small gym session into the pool for recovery. Free time from five to seven. No drink again. Dinner together. Bit of video after dinner. And then I always done a quiz. And the, and the quiz was wild popular among the lads because we would have had three, three rounds of, say, general knowledge sport. But then we would have had a player led round. So we would have got a wee bit of background info off by a few old secrets a few uh, maybe skeletons in the closet that we would ask a few questions on, you know, and got a bit of crack going as well. So what player in the camp did this happen to on his holidays, etc. You know, and it was a bit of banter, but it was some it was some crack. And then that evening, say maybe half nine, ten o'clock, we just would have said to the boys, and to be fair, they'd have been hugely respectful. Twelve o'clock's the cut off lads. So for two and a half hours, two hours, the boys would have had four or five pints. Some of the players wouldn't have drank at all. Some of them would have had a latte or a coffee. A few of the lads would have had a few beers. Nobody would have left the premises. Then up the next morning, breakfast together and uh, maybe a bit of briefing, small meeting. And then we would have trained about 11 o'clock on the Sunday for a couple of hours, had our dinner and down the road then Sunday afternoon. And and the value in those camps, and that's the thing, Andy, like people don't realise, we were big borrowing and stealing to get away in those camps. right? And like I mean, we had to maximise our resources. And then you have the likes of Dublin, for example, that will go away for five days to the Carton House. Like, like what advantage is that like? It's just it's monumental advantage, like, monumental, like you know. But there were there were uh, those camps for me when they're done right, and uh, you can get the balance between between work and play. You know, if you get the balance right, because it can't be all work, work, work. You know. No, you're struggling there, boy. I'm struggling with it. I just I have a chest infection here, lad. Honest to God, I, the last couple of days I've been smothered. But um, no, like obviously, even the tactical sessions, even the 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 the, the the what you call it, the contact you have with the players is so important in terms of getting your messages across. Like, isn't it? Like, you've two full, full, isn't it? Yeah. Like, as in, as it, as it, as a unit, as a team, everyone in those meetings, you're all on the, you're, you're trying to create your, yeah. send out your message, what you want to do as a team here, yeah. as a collective, yeah. and you just don't get that, you just don't get that time on the one-off sessions. You hit, you hit the nail on the head, contact time. You know, you're in each other's company, you know, where you wouldn't normally be, you know, there's not people arriving left, right and centre or whatever in the training. If it, like a training night, everything's frantic. You're there early, you're preparing a session. Yeah. You might have to speak to, you know, maybe end of all, he's not happy, he didn't get on the weekend. You might have to spend 10, 15 minutes having a one-to-one with him, having a chat. Somebody else is maybe not happy that they're half, not playing well. You're having a chat with them. You don't hour, get that opportunity. Half to have, what? You have What's to spend that? Half an hour with me. <laughs> You'd have to spend a half an hour with me. <laughs> <laughs> you it was sitting in the sitting in a dark room with you and the sports psychologist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, what did you do? What what did you do with the uh, 
Actually, that's a good. That's a good question. From obviously the first first fifteen are always happy. You don't you barely have to talk to them. Yeah. Obviously, with the the messages you're trying to get across, but obviously keeping your squad happy in terms of Tur- Turlock yeah. or whatever management setups you're in, Stephen. How did you get that balance right? Did you rank players before the championship games? Usually with James, he's I think everybody, squad. everybody has their own unique way. I think everybody has their own unique way of doing it. You know, I think when you're playing possible versus probables in training, I think lads have a fair idea of how close they are, where they're at. You know, I think when when you're we would have we would have always played the possibles versus the probables, right? We would never have mixed our team to training very very seldom. We would have. You know, on a, on a Thursday night, if you were doing something tactically for the Saturday or the Sunday, we would have had our starting 15 playing. Um, you know, sometimes we would have played 15 against 17 to make the to make the starting 15 work a wee bit harder. Maybe put in a permanent plus two or something like that, you know, to maybe, maybe make them have to work a wee bit harder offensively and stuff to break teams down. But, like, when you're dealing with it, and this is the thing, <coughs> and uh, I, th- I think the hardest lads to deal with, right, and and this is, this is, this is important in a county team, I think they're those lads who aren't even making the panel. Right, because I'll tell you what you need with those lads, and you know this: the dynamic of your squad can be dictated by number twenty-eight to number thirty-four. I'm telling you, because see if you get a rotten apple in that, if you get a poisonous or a wee rotten apple who can go in there, he can pull four or five lads who are in the periphery of number sixteen to twenty-four with him. You know, and that's a big thing. And you need what we were very lucky in a couple of years. We call it. We had great dynamic, and that lads knew that. And it was probably different in Carlo because Carlo probably had the best 25 footballers playing for Carlo, right? And he probably had the best 25 and he probably had another 10 lads that were just delighted to be there, right? That That's no disrespect, but that's it. But in a squad like Mayo or Dublin, that would be even harder because everyone would be expecting to play. You know what I mean? You know, when you've got that wee bit of stronger strength and depth. Like, so for me, that is the key at inter-county level. The dynamics in number 26 to 34. <coughs> see, those, see if those lads are happy... And those lads are driving, training on. You're in the right path. You're in the right path, you know. And that's that's would a big have, thing. Would you, and, would you have to be strategic, Stephen, in terms of them boys outside? Usually, that age, the age bracket, usually the boys outside the 28 or 26, should I say, are yeah. kind of training father, as in, like, as John Brennan would say last last year or last week. Um, yeah. You know that the, the you know the twenty twenty one year olds, as you said, they're happy to be there. You're trying to develop exactly for the next exactly. for the next year. Yeah, exactly. So the dynamics, so the dynamics you, that we yeah, they're nearly they're nearly like a mini development squad. They're nearly like a mini development yes. squad. You know, they're um, they're there for development purposes, and that's a that's a big thing. That's a big thing. And uh, and I remember I remember in twenty sixteen doing a, a coaching thing for Scaries, and it was with. Uh, it was with Lindsay Davy, the Dublin ladies captain, and Johnny Cooper. And I remember picking Cooper's <laughs> brains for 10 minutes. And I remember saying to him, like, what, right? He says, like, Stevie, it's not the fucking fancy facilities we're training in or anything like that. He says, it's, a, it's the fact that if you're not doing it at training, there's another man standing over your shoulder waiting to step into your jersey. You know, and that, and that was what drove that group on, probably. And the, the, competitiveness, the competitiveness in that Dublin squad was astonishing. Like it was a really high level squad, real high level competitiveness, you know, and, and you the, the second fifteen probably could have won Leinster at a canter at a canter. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know, and that's that was the strength but of that they had, you know. That, yeah, that's the difference in like as in you yourself see if you know it's human nature. If you know yourself as a player, you're guaranteed your spot. You know, over time you might take the foot off the gas here or you'd have to be very yeah. disciplined um in not doing that. But like as you said there with the dubs there, like they had a second fifteen and as you said they could win Minster. So there's no person could really take there's no real there's maybe three or four of that dub team that were guaranteed their places. Is that is that probably a bit too low? Well, maybe, I'd, say, maybe that's probably fair enough. I'd say that's probably a fair enough reflection. And like we, we, we probably laughed and joked at the time. When you look back at it now, we were probably we were probably ha- not harsh on them like because the whole you know, the whole financial doping thing that people used to throw at them was probably a wee bit unfair. But there used to be a line thrown out and we laughed at it at the time end it, right? And myself well, and Daniel St. Ledger were, and, and we were playing golf last week and me and him were chatting about this. Daniel actually manages St. Sylvester's in Dublin now and uh, he, he's a very, very good coach actually. But we were chatting about it and we said, do you remember the line that used to be thrown out? It's a once in a generational line of players. Mm. Do you remember that line? You know, it's the once yeah. in a generational. And you know, they were probably right, Emma. They were probably right. You know, the likes of Dean Rock, the Brogans, uh, you know, hey, Damard Conley, Paul Flynn, they were special footballers, boy. You know, and the lads coming in to replace them 
with the likes of Brian yeah. Howard and, and and Merchant and those guys. And that was a big, big thing, boss. Like a big, big thing. Like you know, the war that was a seriously good group of footballers, but seriously good group. Like I, I agree, a hundred percent agree with you in terms of the caliber of the player they have. But the thing is now, though, is they Dublin won't go without winning their Ireland for sixteen years. It'll be every every five years. Max. No, no, I agree with you. No, I agree. With you. Yeah, the one, too much, too the much, too 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 but you can't tell me that doesn't make a difference to a young lad breaking into a team oh, and you're four or five Christ. decades. Uh, and I even even the little, I can't even, I can't get even kill McCud. Kill McCud. Kill McCud had five games in Crow Park before playing with her, for example. Yeah. Like oh. that, you know the team rooms, you know the world. Like you've been there, right? You've played it numerous times, right? I remember going back to, to the two games we had there with Carlo and I had actually I had actually fucking some of the lads had played maybe eleven years before that in Croker, right? But the large yeah. majority of the panel had never played there. So we had a we had a we had protocol of warm ups. We couldn't do our normal warm up that we always yeah. do. You weren't allowed to do that. You had a specific time that you were allowed out and you weren't allowed to do anything in front of the goals. All those wee small things matter, like free takers finding the range, the whole lot, like you know, it's it's mad. Like, like the Leinster final a couple of years ago, I'll give you a good example. Meath pulled into the Leinster final a few years ago, right? <laughs> Meath pulled in. And they weren't, they weren't allowed in a certain... I was told this from a very good source that was actually with Meath at the time. They weren't allowed in through a certain door, right? And they had to drive the bus the whole way around the stadium and drop the players off at the other side or whatever, right? And when the Meath players got off the bus, the Dublin players were already walking across the field the shorter way with their earphones in and their bags and their shoulders, you know, a couple of hours before throw in. You know, those small wee things, like just the familiarity of the place, knowing the groundsman, knowing the whole, knowing the setup, it's mad. Listen, it's massive, massive. Well, like, is, I'm gonna fin we'll, we'll finish up here now very quickly, but like, is it is it a case of other teams, other counties don't want to say anything because they foresee they, they foresee that as a as a weakness or like you know oh we can't let on that this this is affecting us here or you know we don't want to show weakness I just don't get it Stephen I like obviously look at it it all comes down to money and like but like you can't say no wow. for the league games like for instance Mayo right. that we have we have fifteen million off a of debt because of that stand because of that stadium and like Dublin yeah. Dublin don't have that and then they have the sponsorship on top of that and then they get to play in Croker. The, where you play right. your all-around final, I just, I just think it's so, there. I'm going to throw something at you, right? Dublin played Clare on Saturday night, right? Yeah, yeah. Dublin played Clare on Saturday night, and Mayo played Tyrone. And I'll guarantee you here now, there'll be as many at the Mayo game than there is at the Dublin game. 100%. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, that, is, there, is, it, is Dublin playing Clare in Croker, is this? In Croker, in Croker. On Saturday night, do you know what I mean? I, you know, I, like Claire, Claire, I, Claire won't bring Claire won't bring a big support, and Claire won't bring a big support. You know, and not a lot of Dublin fans will come out to watch that much. No, no. Well, the only thing, the only thing that might save it. I don't know. I haven't checked the fixtures yet. There might be a double header hurling or something on before it, which might pull in another ten thousand or something. But that's you're ta you're talking about. Many people be at that twenty thousand if you're lucky. If you're lucky, Mass. you know. Mass. But anyway, look, it's, we'll, fin we'll finish on that. We'll, <laughs> we're not giving out. You're, so you're, gonna... you're building this up. You're building this up, lovely. You're teeing this up, lovely, for Mayo off and win this year. <laughs> <laughs> go on, good chat to you. Look, it, I'll talk to you next week. Good, Cheers, good man. Go good man. Have a good one. Yeah, bye, 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 See you. Bye, bye, bye.